Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. Three, two, one. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to uh, Randy, a gentleman who contacted me from uh, Upper Minnesota, and he's been having some interesting things happening at his property. Uh, I'm just going to let him uh, first maybe uh, introduce a little bit about what the listeners should know about you, Randy, and then we'll get right into it. Sure. I live, um, let me see here, 60 miles south of Canada in northern Minnesota. Um, I don't live in town back in the woods. Um, I'm a musician. I play it all. I've never had a day job. I've always been in a band. If not a band, I have a sound company and I provide productions for big acts, little acts, whatever. In fact, I used to do all the stuff in Tama, Iowa, at Mithquaki Casino there, all their national acts. But that's a long time ago. But anyways, this all first started. I never believed in Bigfoot, but I did not believe in it either way. I never gave it a thought. Never crossed my mind about it. And um, I've been hunting in the woods since 12 years old, and I'm 64. And um, after deer hunting's over, the next day I'll walk back in the woods and see where the deer go during pressure. And there's only two people that hunt in the state land behind me besides myself. And then we live also on our own 40 acres of wooded land. So when I get the next morning, I'm back there walking in the woods. There's some snow on the ground. And I come across those three deer in their bed. Something killed three deer in their bed overnight, and there was nothing but hair. Just it wasn't a spine, a bone, a rib cage, and, and of three deer. Now I know what wolves do, or cougars do to a deer. They they can make a mess of it. Yeah, they do eat the bones and all that kind of stuff and chew on them. But there was not one bone. And the hide, there wasn't even a hide. It looked like the hair had been plucked out. Now, what kills three deer in their bed and doesn't leave a track? There wasn't any tracks, nothing, just that deer, there wasn't a drag mark or nothing. So right away, though, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, my God, a pack of wolves back here. That's what I thought, you know, I don't even got a gun or nothing with me. So I go back home, you know, nothing besides that. For about two or three weeks, we're still at home. I haven't gone on the road yet in the van. I was telling my wife, you know what? In our 40 acres in our deer food plot back there, there's not a track in the woods. There's not a track in the state land. To me, that was really weird, like really weird. So we go home. I mean, we go on the road, and we play a lot in Wyoming, Arizona, Nevada, and all that. We come back, and it's going to be 40 below that night. And the snow was way past my knees in the woods. And I like walking woods all the time. So I took the snowmobile and rode it around all the trails back there, the whole logging trails. I knew it would freeze that night and I could walk them the next day. So I did. I walked them the next day and I'm coming around a corner and one of the old trails getting back close to the house. And I come across these tracks and I'm looking at them and I kind of laughed to myself. What is this? They're in line. They're 18 inches long. They're six foot between each step in line. And I kind of laughed to myself. Is, what, is this Sasquatch or Bigfoot? You know, I'm kind of making a laugh about it. They stepped across the river. and. I'm trying to follow them, but every step was past my knees in the snow. I just couldn't follow them anymore. And they, they, they were coming out of a cedar swamp. And all of a sudden, they just stop. There's no more tracks. They just, they just disappeared. They didn't jump in no tree. There was no trees around. It was in the swamp. There was nothing. And so I took pictures of them, and I sent them to, have you heard of the SRA of Minnesota, Sasquatch Research Association of Minnesota? I believe so, yes. Yeah, well, it's two guys that used used to be with the BFRO, and they broke off and started their own thing. Well, anyways, I sent my pictures to um, the head of the guy, head of the thing called Jim Hebb. Oh, man, he got back to me that same day. He said, Randy, you got a squatch. That's how this all started, and he told me what to look for and all that. Since then, they've been seen 26 times on my behind my house here by other researchers that I've let here. I've had, um, I call them double class A sightings, not class A sightings. 
in the daytime, in the open, we look at each other. I'm close to them. Um, and that's what my sight is. I'll tell you about some of my sightings. I'm going to tell you one thing. I know a lot about Sasquatch, but then on the other hand, I don't know nothing. I can tell you this, though. They are not a big ape hiding behind a tree in the woods. There are people, but they can do way more than we can imagine. I've seen them come out of portals. I've seen them disappear in front of my eyes. I've heard them do the Sierra sounds. They've said my name. They hit my house all the time. They gift me. Um, I'm just giving you a rundown, then I'll go back to the stories. Um, they gift me. I've got over 40 deer skulls that they've given to me. And, and I know this sounds crazy, crazy to me too, but it's real. Um, there'll be a deer skull, eight-point buck deer skull on my deer stand back in the woods. Well, there's no trespassers. We don't have trespassers here. I don't even talk to the neighbors about this stuff. Um, the only other people that hunt back in that state land is two guys, and they got their stand on the on a fence line. They don't even go in the woods, and I don't even talk to them about it. Um, oh, there'll be times I'll be walking back on a deer trail back in the woods there. I'll come back and there's a deer skull laying there right where I just walked. Well, deer skulls, they don't walk, walk by themselves. And here's the thing about all these deer skulls. When a, when a buck drops his horns, squirrels and porcupines and whatever chew on them because it's protein for them. They eat them. There's chew marks on them. None of these skulls have a chew mark on them. The horns are in perfect condition. They give me Y sticks. Sometimes there'll be a Y stick right on my steps of, of my deck of my house here. Um, I ask for them to do certain things for me, little simple things. And the next day I go back there and they've done what I've asked for. It's the craziest thing. Okay, I'll tell you about some of my double class A sightings. Um, a couple of years ago, I'm dry, taking my pickup and I got to go to Minneapolis play in this band. I didn't want to drive down my driveway, muddy old driveway. So I went down, we live right by a power line too, a power line corridor. And I said, I'll just drive down there because on a 40 acres, a square 40 acres is a quarter mile by quarter mile, you know, square 40. Each, it's quarter mile by quarter mile by quarter mile by quarter mile. So I get almost down to the end of the quarter mile and there's a approach here. I can go out to the highway and I'm looking down to the next 40 acres which is my daughter's daughter's father-in-law. And I see something really wide and auburn reddish colored, And it's looking out of place to me. And it's still in the open, but it's behind some little small sapling that's kneeling down. And, you know, I'm looking at what that's weird looking. I say to myself, what is that? And I get out of the pickup and I start walking towards it. And I get closer. I get like 75 yards from it. And then I get like 50 yards from it. Guess what? It stands up. I said, oh, my God. That was my first double class A sight. And oh my God, that's Sasquatch on there's a red one. And after it's all, I'm going to back up for a second. After it was all said and done, I went and got a tape measure and measured the small, little, small sapling. I mean, it's like a half inch around, little, little thing. It was standing behind that. I pulled it down and measured that that was eight feet tall. This thing was nine feet tall. It was a foot taller than that. So we look at each other and I keep walking towards it. I am not even scared. For, I'm not scared. Um, for some reason, I look down at my shoe and look up. I don't know why I did that. I look up and it's gone just like that. So I don't know what it did there if it walked off or what it did because I didn't see that. But it had been kneeling down with its hand, hand and like in a, like if you make a fist and a sum out and the wrist back. And I we made a cast of that. I got a cast of that. And first I thought that was like a um, toes and like a dew claw thing. But it's not. It's knuckles and a thumb and a wrist. And it's 16 inches long. So I got that. Then another time, my wife's got to go up to another town to help her daughter paint paint a room. And she tells me, don't take those grandkids. Uh, one's the 11, the other one is um, uh, 5. Don't take those out to the woods because I'm in the woods every day. I said, oh, no, don't worry about that. I won't do that. But after about an hour, I get bored, and I tell the girls, let's walk down the, the power line. And I start walking out of the house, and I forget my phone. I say, ah, I don't need my phone. I'm telling the girl, I don't need my phone. We're just walking down the power line. We get halfway down the quarter mile. Now, on our power line poles, 10 feet up, there's a black plastic wrap. So that porcupines, raccoons, squirrels, whatever, can't crawl past that and chew on the wires. I'm seeing something four feet from one of these power line poles on the next 40 acres. And it's massive. It's even with that black plastic wrap. It's a 10-footer. I get like 150 yards from it, and it's a Sasquatch. It's the black one. And it's looking at me. I'm looking at that. I get a little close to it, and I turn around and say, girls, get up to me right now. And I turn back, and it was gone. 
I didn't realize Bristol was looking at it too. And she said, Grandpa, I just seen a tall, hairy, black giant walk in the woods. So I didn't see that walk either. But I asked her, I never talked to the kids about Sasquatch and stuff. I asked her, well, how did it walk? It, she walked just like the Patterson Gilman film thing with the arms swinging back and forth. When a yeah, bears stand up, when a bear stands up, its paws are up. They're not hanging down past its knees. And that's what this was doing. Another time, um, that December, I'm walking on that power line, too, to go to my gifting area. And I get really close, and there's that same one or another one, but it looked like the same one, standing at the same spot by the power line pole. This time, I'm not taking my eyes off of it. I get my phone out of my pocket, and I'm trying to get it going, the videotape it as I'm walking. And I do get it videotaping, but all I got was the grass. I get about 75 yards from it, and guess what it does? It disappears in front of my eyes. Poof, gone. It did not walk off. I never took my eyes off of it. It disappeared. Just like that. Now, I've had some of the SRA guys here quite a few times, and that's the guys that have seen them here. Um, there's a guy from Bemidji, Bemidji, Minnesota. So there I kind of gave my – I'm north of Bemidji. Um, he has seen them here. But anyways, I got a juvenile hand. They like venison. And I like venison a lot. Sometimes they'll kill, like I said, three deer. Sometimes it'll like um, sheep wool. It is so much deer hair. And I got lots of pictures of all that kind of stuff. And that is not wolves and, and um, cougars or coyotes doing that because it'll happen overnight. That don't happen overnight with a wolf, especially in the wintertime. Because in the wintertime, you know, the deer body freezes. It ain't going to get rotten on you. But anyways... I had a juvenile hand. I put some venison out there. And on the state land, I do. I will put a camera out there once in a while. Cameras don't work. Trail cameras do not work. Um, they will drain the batteries dry, and they'll ma wipe the SD card clean. But anyways, I put a trail camera out there, and I put some venison down in apples, and I got a picture of a juvenile hand. You can see the fingernails. The fingers, it looks like a, like a monkey hand, but it's a, a total hand. But anyways, Doug Hycheck, which were real good friends, friends, and I'll talk to you about him in a little bit. He said, Randy, go back there and try to recreate that hand so we can get dimensions and all that. Well, I had left my camera there. It would, never had moved. I went back there, and I had uh, my wife's son, Tanner. He's At that time, he was 29. And Brian Glenn, an older guy from Bemidji. Um, Tanner's got a beard, kind of reddish. Brian Glenn's got white hair and he's bald. And I told those two, do not go in front of the camera at all while I'm trying to recreate this. So they're there behind the, behind the tree and stuff. But I did it wrong. I was laying in front of the camera trying to get my hand above my head, trying to make it like that. I should have been behind the tree. But anyways, I had brought a computer out there with me. And I'd let it take a couple pictures of me. I take the SD card, I'll put in the computer. Oh, I got that wrong. That's all wrong. And the third time I'm doing it, I put the SD card back in the camera, getting ready to let it take a picture. All of a sudden, Brian Glenn, he's had this before, the infrasound thing. Oh, okay, I got real sick and really weird feeling. Of course, me and Tanner, I don't feel nothing, so nothing I can do about it at the time. So I take the SD card out of the camera, put it in the computer, and guess what? There's a Sasquatch standing by us because he had half the body. And that is what it is. The camera picked it up from the side view. Our eyeballs did not see it. But it, here's the thing. If it would, would have been a bear, we would have seen a bear with our eyes. And a bear's not going to come stand a foot away from me and stand there while I'm messing around with the camera. It was a Sasquatch. Now, they listen to me. I'll ask them to do certain things, and this is the crazy stuff. I'll ask them to do certain things, and they do it. I'll tell you a few of them. Um, last year, I brought some venison out to the state land. There's a huge teepee out there, and it's not wind blowing. There's no root base there, and there's big sticks and trees that have been placed in there. Um, in fact, this year they've added to it again. But anyways, I put some venison down on the ground. It was kind of freezer burnt hamburger and some steak. I put some apples and some bushes and a couple jars of peanut butter. I brought one camera facing that stuff. I brought in another camera on the other side facing that camera. Each camera is facing each other. Each camera is facing the food. I said, whether they're female or male, I always say you guys. I said, okay, you guys, here's what I want you to do. You take this first camera. I want you to make it not work. Never work again. It will never work again. I said that, and I want you to twist it. 
On the next camera, I want a picture of me when I set it up. I want pictures of deer, bear, and ravens flying through here. Then I said, do your magic. Take all the stuff, and I do not want any pictures of you doing it. And then when I come back to get the camera, I want to picture me on the camera. So I waited a couple of days. I go back there. Guess what? The first camera is twisted. And when I get home with the SD cards and stuff, you know, that camera does not work. Today, it doesn't work. The batteries were not drained dry. Batteries were still good, but it won't take a picture anymore. The second camera did exactly what I asked for. I got pictures of deer, bear, and ravens flying through there. Then there's no picture of what took the food. Because when the deer, bear, and ravens went through there, the food's all there. There's no picture of what took the stuff. And then there's a picture of me when I go pick the cameras up. That is exactly what I asked for. And there's no way that some 10-foot Sasquatch, when there's no leaves in the trees, hide behind a poplar tree and I don't see them. That, that's, it's not possible. So that's what I'm saying. Yes, they are flesh and blood when they're on the earth. I call it the earthly plane or whatever, dimension, whatever, because they leave tracks. I got cast in the tracks. I got lots of hair that Doug Hycheck has got. Some of the hair is red, long, wispy. I'm getting them out of the power line poles. I'm thinking they're, I don't usually give opinion because opinions are guessing. But I think they're rubbing her back on and scratching her back because the, the hair will be way high up or in, or in the middle of the pole, and it's red, and you can see through it. And it's some of them, and it's 10, 10 to 12 inches long. And I got a bear rug on my wall, and then there's no 10, 12-inch hair on that bear rug. So they listen to me. Here's the other thing is I'll do. I will, like in my gifting area, this year I've gone through 270 jars of peanut butter and 20 some bags of apples i got four nails in an oak tree and i got two nails together and i'll go out there and lean a, a peanut butter jar on it i'll take the paper off put the lid back on and put the peanut butter jar on there now when yeah have i had bears come there before of course i have bears get it and they take the jar and it's all bit up and all tore apart the cap is all bit up when a sasquatch gets it they'll take the lid off and if the lid is red yellow brown blue whatever color the lid is they're in color order by the tree. I got so many lids down there by that tree, and I don't, it's not me that's putting them there. And like I said, we don't have trespassers. Nobody even knows where my gifting area is. My wife's never even been back to it. Um, and the jar will look like it's gone through a dishwasher. It is perfectly clean. And I don't, this will be opinion now, I don't believe that they're sitting there licking the jar. I don't know how they're getting it so clean. And sometimes the jar will be upside down in a bush. And then they're still back there. There's, I got jars upside down in bushes there that they have done that. Um, but anyways, I'll ask for, hey, can you take some small saplings, popple saplings, and bend them over the, the trail or I got to walk into my gifting area. And that happened just the other day. I said that the next day I go, there's two po small popple saplings bent over my trail where I, I can't even walk through there. So I just leave them that way. I walk around it. Now, they did this again now. I didn't specifically say this, and I got pictures of this too. I asked them to bend some saplings across the trail where I would ride my four-wheeler. And um, the next day, this is last week now, the next day I go back there, guess what they did? They got one going east, one going west, one going east, one going west, and they put two big sticks in a pine tree in an X. Now, there was no storm at all, and that's too much of a coincidence to have a popple sapling going east, one going west, and these are right together, about a foot apart from each other. And um, they're symmetrical, east, west, east, west. Now, I'm asking for that stuff. The other day I asked for a Y stick. I said, can you give me a Y stick? I haven't had one for a while. And back in the end of the 40 acres, there's a little fire ring where I can set and build a little fire and have some research set there with me. And there's a wooden spool there. Well, there was a perfect Y stick on my wooden spool. Well, that Y stick didn't blow off the ground and blow up there because we're in a deer food plot. There's not even no trees there. You see what I'm getting at? Nope. Oh, are you there? Absolutely. I'm... Oh, yeah. Okay. Doug Hightrack calls my place the Skinwalker Ranch of the North. Now, a couple years ago, I don't do trail cameras anymore. Um, I don't, I don't do them on this 40 acres anyways. I will do them back in the state land once in a while. But anyways... Doug said, Randy, put a camera back out there again. Put a camera out there and say this. Can we get a picture of you and we won't share it with nobody? It'll just be for me. I said, it'll be for me and it'll be for Doug. But then I said, if you don't want a trail camera ever on this property, you've got to give me a sign you don't want them here. 
So I said that. I go back the next day. Guess what? There's a 15-foot wide stick on my camera, blocking my camera. Well, that's no coincidence. And it, it wasn't from the tree that I had my camera on. It was brought there. So that's why I don't do trail cam. I won't let anybody do trail cameras here. And I don't just let anybody come here, you know. I don't want to ruin what I got going on because I like it. I'm not scared of them. Now, I'll tell you some weird stuff. They've been in my house before. And if it isn't them, it's something to do with something. Um, two years ago, I'm at a rodeo. My one granddaughter, she made seven in the world in, in calf roping and stuff. She's real good in the rodeo. And um, the high school rodeo, in them, I mean. And um, I was at the one in Bemidji there watching her, and it rained all day that day. So my daughter, Rachel, asked me, hey, can we keep your pickup here and you take the one-ton truck and the big trailer and, and go home with it and come back in the morning with 25 bales of hay that's not wet? I said, yes, I can do that. So I get home about 10 o'clock. I got the two kids with me, and the house is locked. I said, oh, my God. I only got one house key. It's on my pickup keys and Rachel's got my pickup and I got her pickup. So how am I going to get in? So I found a pry bar and I kind of jimmy the door open and I got it open. I come in, turn the lights on. I have this laptop computer. I had just bought it in Bemidji. I set it down on the table before I turn the lights on. My hands get sticky. I said, what the heck? Turn the lights on. Something or one of them things came in the house took ice cream out of the freezer, opened it up, and it melted all over the table, but the stick was not in the ice cream bar. It was on the other side of the table. Now, if I would have took an ice cream bar out before I left that morning and left it at the table and opened it up, I wouldn't have done that. If I would open it up, the stick would have still been frozen in the ice cream bar, not on the other side of the table. See what I'm saying? That was really weird. And so as I put the kids, they go to bed, I go into my bedroom, there's nobody home. I get ready to go into bed, and something had pissed in my bed all the way. It was so sour and so bad that I couldn't even sleep in the bed. I had to take all the stuff off all the way down to the box spring. I slept on the couch. About a week later, nobody's home. We got a golden retriever. And in our bedroom door, I always lock it because it's so much weird stuff going on around here. I always just lock it, and it's got these little French glass doors all the way up. And so... And I took my clothes and put it on a hamper. It's about three, three, four feet up hamper. I lay him on top of that. I go to bed. About four in the morning, the dog is growling, looking out the window, deep growling, really, really terrible. I get woke up, and my door handle's turning back and forth, click, click, click. I can hear it turning back and forth, but I can't move. It's like I'm frozen. And I must have eventually fell asleep. I get up the next morning, go grab my clothes off the hamper. They're all pissed on again. The same sour, icky smell. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, here's another one. Jim Hebb told me, Randy, you got to stop carrying a rifle when you go out in the woods. you got to stop doing it. And if you stop doing the rifle thing, you'll get a lot more activity. So I did that. Even though I felt really uncomfortable, I stopped carrying a rifle. He said, take a GoPro camera and wear it backwards. I said, I don't have one. So take your phone, and every once in a while you're walking in the woods, take a picture, and you got to announce yourself. I said, I got to announce myself. He said, yeah, if I walked in your house and you were sitting on your couch, you'd wonder, who's coming in my house? It's the same thing. It's their house. So I'm walking back in the woods. I feel feel stupid as heck, you know, talking to the trees in the woods, but I'm, I'm doing it. And I'm across the river in this cedar swamp area, really thick back in there. And I'm doing that. I'm saying, like, hey, this is Randy. I'm just looking at your stuff there, and I'm harmless. You can trust me. I'm just saying, rambling on, saying stuff like that. I said a lot that day. I'm back there about four hours walking. I come back, I'm standing on my couch looking at my pictures. All of a sudden, oh my God, I got three Sasquatches on my phone. I'm really excited about it. All of a sudden, something hits the side of the house. It like shook the house. It really startled me. I get up, oh, there's somebody at the door. And I get to start walking to the door. And in a female, female voice, I hear, Randy, just like that. I say to myself, oh, there is somebody out there. I go out there, there's nobody there. I'm looking around. There's nobody there, but I looked on the side of the house where it was hit, and there's a white finger streaks, white oily finger streaks on the side of my house where they slapped it. Now, they've done that lots of times since then. Now, just last week, we got a camper. This little camper, it's an older little camper. I use it when I'm doing a, a, a concert 
and it's an outside deal, and I set up the day before, I want to be able to stay by the stage and not leave, go to hotel room because all my equipment's there. I need to be by it in case of storm, whatever, you know. And so Terry's daughter and the two grandkids were going to stay in it for fun, but I had the door parked up by the woods line. They didn't want it there. They wanted it down by our garage. So I got it all moved, and I told my wife, Terry, hey, I got the camper moving and the door facing north. She said, I don't think so. She wants it the other way. I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I call her, and I did have it right, but we're talking about that door. And about an hour later, Terry's out with the dog walking, and all of a sudden she hears a bang. It, like, reverberated the sky really loud. In fact, Tanner and the other dog heard it in the house. That's how loud it was. The dog got really scared and pulled her all the way back into the house. While I'm gone, I come back about an hour later, and they're telling me about it. So I'm going around the, the new garage we got. It's got steel on it, that corrugated steel. Well, I don't see nothing on that garage. And I go by the camper, and guess what? There's a huge dent by the door of the camper. There was no dents in the camper at all. So that happened. I didn't say much about it. I didn't talk to them anyways, the, the things in the woods, you know. And a week later, the girls are staying in there, Samantha, and the girls are staying in the camper. And about 2 in the morning, another loud bang on the camper, and it's shaking back and forth, and they knock it right off the block. What happens when you take a camper off a pickup hitch? You, you take it off there, you put it on blocks, and you lower it down so it's level. And you put it on solid blocks. So it's, Well, they took it right off the blocks and it was into the, into the grass. There's seven knuckle marks on the side of the camper where they hit it. Those girls were sleeping. They weren't walking around in the camper, and it was solid anyways. Um, the first time I got the camper, I'm cleaning it up. It had been sitting in this old garage for a couple of years because it's just an older thing. And I'm cleaning the thing up. Well, I went in the house to get some cleaning supplies. I come back, the door is shut, and it's locked. Well, the door can't lock. And I don't have a key for it, so I got to pry it open. Well, I get it open. I got the shop back, and I'm back in it right by the door with the shop back. And one walks right by. I see his, his legs, his feet. His torso, he walks right by me. It's a black one. I go out and look right away, and there's nothing there. Um, if I'm rambling around too much, you can slow me down because I got a lot I can say. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm I've gonna hop. Come, uh, sorry, I'm gonna hop in with a few questions right. if that's all right. I know listeners are gonna be. Like, that's all right. Yep. Shut your mouth. That's but all right. I got it. I got to jump in with a few, just because. So you yep. told me before I asked you, how long do you think it would take to, to share what's going on? You're like, probably two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I totally believe you. <laughs> um, yeah, I know so <laughs> a few questions so far. Uh, did you try to get okay. the fingerprint oils off the side of the house at all? No, I never did. Nope. Okay. Um, no. And I, I got it. Can I insert one thing? Yes, you? go ahead. Back then I was new to this. Yep. Okay, here's the thing, though. I'm not trying to get any evidence for the world anymore. Okay. Not at all. Um, I don't do cameras on the state on this land here. I don't do whooping. I don't do knocking because they're here. I know they're here. And I have a lot of little gifts out in the woods, little wooden blocks, um, little dice, and, and two like three different areas that I get 15, 20 feet from each other. And I go out there every day, and I move them to a certain thing. I take a picture of it. If they move them. And I'll take a picture of that the next day, like I did today, and then I'll remove it to a different thing. We go back and forth every day. I think they're messing with me. I'm messing with them. And people say, Randy, you got to put some flour down, put some mud down, get some tracks. Well, I'm not doing none of that stuff because I'm not trying to trick them into getting evidence. And I think that's one of the reasons I have so much stuff going on because they trust me. That's what I totally believe there. Totally Because I have it. a lot of things going on here. I got more going on than... Like Doug's high checks as anybody in the country because I'm not whooping. I'm not doing all that stuff that a lot of those people do um, to get evidence because I could care less about getting evidence and I'm getting it evidence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much peanut butter are you storing in your house at any given time? None. I go. Okay. Well, <laughs> well you, get, you get what I'm getting at, right? General. Yeah. Yeah, I go. Yeah, I know what you're sitting at. Yes, I know what you're getting at. I'll go to Dollar General buy six or seven jars, you know, and and I'll go out there and put. Sometimes I do two, but most of the time I do one. I'm doing them all the time, and um, and sometimes they don't take it, and it's just there. And then I'll come back. And I'll put another jar. Then there's two jars there. Then they're both gone. Interesting. But you can definitely tell when a bear gets it or a raccoon because that's a whole different thing there. Mm. 
and the jars are laying right down there up bottom. They've knocked them down and they're there. And when the Sasquatch gets them, they're not there. The caps are down in the color they are and the jars are gone or they're upside down in, in a bush of a tree. That's the difference. If I wanted to give opinion, which I don't like because I'm guessing, this would be a far out opinion. They're so clean, they look like they went through a dishwasher, and I can't imagine them taking a tongue and licking them because they're not an animal. It might be that they take them wherever they come from, <laughs> scoop the peanut butter out, wash it, and bring it back. I mean, that's just a guessing. I'm just guessing that. But it, it fits what for what I got going on here. So, oh, do you want me to tell you? Go ahead. You got more questions. Go ahead. Uh, just one more for now. You said you had a few photos on your phone. What happened to those? Well, I have a lot of photos on my phone right now of the movements of my stuff. I have lots of X's and, and, and structures. And I've been hunting since I'm 12 years old. Not one time in my whole life. I hunted. I, I said in my deer stand, dark till dark. And my deer stands are what I make out of the poplar trees and the, the trees, whatever. No heated stands, no enclosed stands. I just And I just sit there. I don't get out to eat or nothing. I have not once ever seen sticks fly through the air and land in an X or a TP or a Y or a V ever in my life. Trees do fall over. I, I know that. Um, but they leave a root base because they fall over and the roots are there. The structures I got, there is no root base. There's sticks that have been put together that way, not even from the area. It's um, if you came here to my place, which I would let you, and you walk back here, you would walk out shaking your head. I have so much stuff going on here. Okay. Cause there... I've been in other woods before, you know, yep. and I'm um, like in Wyoming in the mountains and all that, looking to see if I got this. They got the same thing. And I've never seen anything like I got going on here. It's the weirdest, craziest thing ever. Absolutely. So I, I believe you had said you were in your house and you realized you had a few photos of the Sasquatch on your phone. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes, I do. I do. I got one a um, couple of years ago now. I'm back in the land back there and I come across a fresh deer kill and the stomach is ripped open and the heart and liver is just gone. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna, I am gonna put a camera on this thing, and so I got a picture of a Sasquatch. It, it took it that night. I went back the next day. The deer is gone. There was some snow on the ground. No tracks. No drag marks. The whole deer is gone. But I got the picture of it is. I, its elbows are backwards. You can see its backbone and its head. It's leaning over like that. You can see part of the cone head and stuff, and it's not blurred out. It ain't one of those blob squatches. It's real. Yeah, wow. I got that on my phone. Yeah, it's real. I've got some other ones. Um, back in one of my deer stands, I put a camera on my deer stand. And I made some shooting lanes a long time ago. And I took all the brush, the, the little popples and stuff that got, got out of my way and had my wife's son, Tanner, pile them in one pile neatly because I don't want a big old mess of stuff. And I had another camera down the shooting lane, that's a good 50, 60 yards away. Well, it's far enough away that's not going to take a picture of my deer stand. You, you know what I'm saying? It's too far away if something's on my deer stand. That's why I had a camera on my deer stand. And I'm not doing it for Sasquatch. I'm doing it to see what kind of deer are coming through there. And so I got a picture of a Sasquatch, and they twisted my one camera, and they took some of the, the popple that I cut out of there and put it up in the crotch of a tree. Well, they were... <laughs> My shooting lane was going west, no, going east, and the crotch of the tree was south. They carried them over there and put them up in the crotch of the tree. And it's my ones I caught because I could see I cut them with a chainsaw. But here's what I think happened. The first camera that's a long ways away, there's one standing by there. You can see half the red body there. That set that camera off, and that camera did out a picture of the area. You know what I'm saying? And that other Sasquatch, there was two of them, was by my deer stand, and it's kneeling down. It's taken up the width of six feet all the way across there. You, it, and it's one of those blob squatches things, but I know what it is because I'm there all the time, and, and that big red blob is not there. It was only there that, on that, my camera sighting. You know what I mean? There's, it's clear right there. There's no leaves or bushes going right there. It was a Sasquatch. Oh, absolutely. And are but, these but photos... But it, it is a world evidence. Yeah. Wait, what? Are these photos available to see anywhere? Um, 
at my house. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, I'll okay. Send, no, uh, it's it's a valid question, right? Like, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I would I can send you some, and I'll send you some structures too and stuff, ones that are amazing teepees and stuff. I mean, yeah, I would send them to you if you want. If if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd be interested if you're offering, but I'm just curious, like if they've ever been published any, anywhere, but yeah, that's wild. Well, there, yeah, a lot of those um, pictures are in that book that, that uh, okay. Mike Cross yep. writ, written about this place. Okay. But, um, he had them really nice, but <laughs> Doug must wanted, I don't know why he did, but a lot of them have been shrunk down. You can't even really see what they are. Gotcha. For the, for the book, I suppose maybe it was the less pages then or something. Man, it's, but yeah, Doug's it's hyped. Wild. I just wanted, I just wanted, um, God, I got to talk to somebody about what's going on here. It's, it's going, it's, I got too much going on here. And that's how I got involved with this Mike Quas from, from, um, he lives over by Fargo and he's written several books about Minnesota Sasquatches. He came here and he was always the flesh and blood guy, guy like the regular animal head in the woods, but he don't think that way anymore. Not after coming here. Um, and so he wrote the book. I wasn't, I don't get no money off of it. I don't get a penny off of how many they sold. They made it in the top 100 bestsellers list on Amazon and mysterious books. Mm. So I will tell you about the portal thing. We're back in that stand there, the one on the state land. And it's made for one person to set in, you know, it's just a platform and some railings around there. I got some camouflage burlap around it so I can at least move my legs out. Anything seeing me move a little bit. So I'm with John Badger. John Badger is part of the SRA. And he's seen one here. He's seen one jump, the, jump, a, jump one of the five strand barbed wire fence that looked like a sprinter. He watched it jump the fence. But anyways, we're sitting in that deer stand. He brought a new camera out. I let him do that on the state land. A brand new camera, new lithium battery, new SD card, a jar of peanut butter, and some apples. And my that's my old gifting area. And we're only like 40 yards away, but we're in the woods. And we're sitting in that stand, and about 11 o'clock at night, we, I mean, I'm touching the shoulder. That's how close we are because it's not made for two. It's so dark out, I can't even see him, but we're standing right together. He's sitting on the chair, and I'm standing. I see this doorway-looking thing, maybe 40, 50 yards away in the woods. And it, it's shaped like a doorway, but like two or three times wider than a, a regular house doorway, you know. And it's shimmering like like the northern lights, reddish, greenish, bluish, yellowish, whitish. And it's like street, like the Northern Lights. And I'm looking at it. I don't say nothing to him. And I take my glasses off. Am I like, well, look, seeing that? Yeah, I am seeing that. And I say, whisper, John, John, you see that doorway light thing over there? And he said, yeah, he'd been watching it too. All of a sudden, two giant like orb things come out of it. But they're walking. We can hear the leaves crunching in their footsteps. And both of them go over to where that peanut butter and camera thing is. Um, and we're excited. About a minute later, not too long. They come back, and the first one is not in the orb form. I see a cone head, red eyes, the shoulders, the arms walking back. We can hear the leaves crunching. The second one is in the orb. They go to that light at doorway looking thing, and it's all gone. We wait a little bit, all amazed. You know, we're so in shock about what watching, what we're watching it. We didn't think about, look well, at our phone here, take a picture of that. We didn't take no picture of it. Um, we get down, we go over there. The apple's gone, the peanut butter's gone. The SD card is wiped clean. The batteries are drained dry. There's not even a picture of us when we set the camera up. Nothing. So that is what they can do. And you said that was John Badger with you? Yeah. You know him? No. So I'm just saying, so there is another person with you that could say that they saw the exact same thing. Yes, there was. Yep. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's now, wild. Here's another one. I got some friends, musician friends, but they're believers in the Bigfoot phenomena thing, but they never seen or nothing. They just want me to take them around back here. He came in from Nashville, so I did. I took him back in the state land. But Brian Glenn, that has seen him here before, has had the infrasound thing here before, he came here, and right across the little creek, one of the, because there's two rivers, one is a creek, one is a river that come together in a Y. He wanted to cross the little bridge and go to one of my deer stands, one of those portable ones, you know, that I bought a while ago on our 40 acres. So he said he just sat in there. He didn't want to take that long walk. Because when you go back to the state land, you're really bushwhacking. It's not no e. there's no trails. It's in the woods. So I said, okay, you sit in there. And um, so we go through the woods. I'm showing them all these structures and teepees and all that kind of stuff. We start coming back. We get um, maybe 200 yards and I'm yelling, hey, hey, Brian, 
We're coming back. And it's looking at us. I see it's turning his head and stuff, looking at us. And, and those guys are yelling, too, we're coming back. And he's looking at us, but not responding to us. And finally, I say, ah, forget him. He knows how to get back. So just go back to the house. We get back to the house. And it had a cone head and the whole works. But I thought Brian had a black, one of those black stocking hats on or beanies on. That's what I thought. We get back to the house, and there he's sitting in the pickup. He never went out there. <laughs> so Really? What? Yeah, really. Yep, he would never went out there. He even heard us yelling for him when he was sitting in the, in the yard of his. He had his window down in our yard. He heard us yelling at him. He was never there. So it either was a young one, but there's no way one of them big things could crawl in that stand. I think it was standing and looking past the stand. The stand's only like ten feet up. I didn't use all the ladders, you know, put it way up high. I didn't do that. Mm. So I mean, I can't say 100% for sure that's what it was but what else was it <laughs> this is really really weird <laughs> stuff uh you were absolutely yeah, I, right oh, i know it is it, yeah it's, it's really weird people say randy why don't you go out and sit in the deer stand by yourself all night long okay i'm not scared of them but <laughs> i am scared a little bit because here's why i don't do it okay i don't know what i'm really getting myself into absolutely that's why I don't do it. And they say, well, why don't you sit by your gifting area in the daytime? Just sit there. Okay, here's why I don't do that. Can you imagine me sitting back there? I do all that peanut butter and stuff. And I kind of doze off and a mother bear comes in with cubs and they, I get in between them. That could be a disaster. Absolutely. For me, because I carry a pistol with me. I'm not going to, I just can't do it without, because I've been seeing cougar lately here and we got wolves and coy- I'm not worried about coyotes, but I am worried about getting between a mother bear and her cubs, and I don't want to have to shoot at it. I don't want to have to try to kill it, and then the, the cubs don't have a mother. I don't want no part of doing that. So I just don't do that. And um, my deer stands I got here in this 40 acres are only about seven feet high. One of those things could walk up and look down in at you. Because they're huge. So uh, my wife has seen one in the ditch. Um, Terry's daughter's seen one crossed on the highway one of the neighbors that come up here from the city's area that hunts here him and his wife seen one i was been seen so many times in my area here across the road coming into these woods here um quite a while ago do you know a guy named chad lewis i am very good friends with chad lewis he is going to be headed down to the van meter visitor festival in uh van meter iowa oh. next weekend so i'm good friends oh. with him yeah okay yep Okay, I don't really know him, but he was doing this book tour thing. Yep. And he came, well, I'm going to say the town, I don't care. He came to the little town of Black Duck. And he was at the nursing home or whatever, you know, doing his little book tour there. And I said, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there and, and listen to him talk about paranormal, paranormal and all that kind of stuff. And I want to tell him about the stuff I got going on here. Because I needed to start reaching out to people that knew a lot more about it than I did at the time. So... I waited until everybody left, but as a crow flies two miles west of here, there's another neighbor that's got a lot going on, but I never knew nothing about his stuff. He didn't know about me. So I said, well, I'm not going to talk when that Ron guy is here. I'm not going to say nothing. And he started talking. And I said, Ron, I got the same thing you got going on, exactly the same stuff. He didn't know about my stuff. I didn't know about his stuff. But I talked that Chad into coming out with me to my place there. And we walked and was the river was flooded at the time. We had to wake, walk way out of our way. He walked out shaking his head. He had never seen so many good X's and structures that weren't wind blowing or and there's no humans out here placing, well I'm gonna do an X here or make a TV, see if Randy can find it. I don't even talk to the neighbors about it. And so so yeah, you can C V remembers going back okay. here <laughs> in our town here with with Randy. Yeah, ask him about it. Just just a few minutes here. So um so Chad Lewis is super respectable guy. He's very super honest. I've talked to him a ton. I've interviewed him, spent time with him. So you're saying he went out to your property, he checked it out, and uh, he's shaking his head as he's walking out. That's yes, incredible. He is. He's seen so many. Yes, he is. Yep. And we had um, another guy with me. Um, I think Pete Moen, he won Mr. American, all that kind of stuff in the day. And I think he was with too. I don't, it wasn't just me and Chad. It was Pete Moen, too. And, uh, yeah, he come out here with me. He come out here, and he walked out back in the state land, and he's seen those teepees and stuff, and he was shaking his head saying, this is really something. Now, you're saying 
you have a neighbor that also has weird stuff going on. I was going to ask you that question, so I'm glad you brought it up. Yes. So what kind of stuff is yes. this neighbor experiencing? Oh, my God. He's, he talks about dog men, and he's got a family over there that he sees all the time. He talks about little people. I don't know nothing about no little people because I've never seen them before. So I don't know. I'm not going to say he's making it up because he's, he's an honest person. And I don't think he's making it up. Because he's got the same thing going on that I have going on here. And at the time, I didn't know nothing about his stuff. They never knew a thing about it. So that validates him and my stuff for me and him. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now this he is... He didn't a, know about me, and I didn't know about him. This is a, is a totally different can of worms. Because now, now you got dog man and little people in this other area. Thankfully, you've only got Bigfoot that you know on your area. <sighs> But well, man, I would love to talk that to I that neighbor. Of, yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know about this little people, but you know, that's moving my stuff all the time. I've never seen a Sasquatch move it. Is it those little people do it? I mean, I don't know, but I've seen them Sasquatches so many times. I'm assuming that's what's doing it, but I, I, I don't know because I've never seen them do it, but there's something weird doing it. It ain't no raccoon doing it on where my little wooden blocks are or the red pre-cut, um, weed eater lines are or my dice there's never no food there ever and they're moved every day now sometimes they yeah go go ahead ahead. no sorry go ahead oh i was gonna say sometimes they move it a little bit and if i wouldn't take a picture i wouldn't notice it sometimes okay here's one thing i gotta tell you and maybe it's a coincidence okay sometimes i'll take the wooden blocks and i'll put them in i'll call it jesus cross you know like a cross that jesus is on i'll put two or three crosses like that they are totally destroyed I don't mean the blocks are broken in half, nothing like that. And these are just little blocks, like an inch or so. But they don't seem to like them. And sometimes they put the dice in six, six, six. Really? Yeah. Oh dear. Not all the time, but there's been times to come back to, and those dice are. I'll put them in like two, three, one, something like that. Just different numbers. They'll change it to six, six, six. Now maybe it's a coincidence, but I've had that several times. Hmm. I'm not a fan of that for sure. No, no, I'm not either. And um, I didn't do no crosses today, but the other day I did. I made a, I made one big cross and come back the next day and there was no cross there. <laughs> now, the other day I made um, the wooden blocks into a heart and they laid a, wood, uh, they laid a Y stick in the middle of the heart. <laughs> now, last December I'm back in the woods with well, John Badger's with me. And we're back in the state line, way back in there where I never really have taken him before. And he heard me say this. I said, hey, you guys, can you give me uh, the knock and sound that you do just to, so I acknowledge me, so let me know that you like what I'm doing, all the stuff I've been doing. And it wasn't even a minute later, we get knock, 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 space, knock, 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 seven of them. Somebody's told me in Morse code that means hello. So there was snow on the ground. So we walked around a ways, you know, didn't see nothing. The next day I go back there by myself and I walked that land really good. I even got on other people's land, zigzagging back and forth. I'm not found there was not one track. Now last year I shot a small deer, dressed it out, and I said, Okay, you guys, here's the heart and liver for you. I'm always in my stand at five thirty in the morning before any other hunter, whatever they're doing, is messing around. So I'm already settled in. Okay. I get to my stand, I look at my watch, it's 12 after 5, and I say, oh, my God, I'm here way too early. And it was almost 10 below out. I don't even know if I'm going to (laughs) last. So a little bit later, maybe by 5.30, I get a knock to the right of me. It was so loud. The whole sky, like, echoed. It was loud. And it didn't really bother me. Then I get one to the left side of me. Then that did bother me. I said, oh, my God, those Sasquatches are here. Uh, I said, I better not get down. It's dark out. I'm not going to walk around in the dark. Then I get one in front of me. Boom, boom, boom. Three of them. Left. I mean, the right, left, and in front of me. And that day, I didn't, I'd last until about noon. I didn't see a deer. So I got out, and I walked around where those, um, not, that knocking sound was coming from. There was no tracks anywhere. Some deer tracks. That's it. So they, uh, they are not taking a stick and hitting a tree. I don't believe that for a second. I don't know how they're doing it, what they're doing, but I know they're not doing that. Absolutely. Have now, you 
I'm not going to mention no names, but okay. I do want to say this. Okay, go ahead. I want to say this. What kind of irritates me in the Sasquatch world is these people that are kind of famous and they're out there talking, going, making their five, six thousand dollars, whatever they're making. That's fine that they're getting that. And they're talking about Sasquatch and they've never seen one. And they, they're trying to be this authority. They've never seen one, so they can't be an authority in it. They'd be like me telling people what your house looks like, and I've never seen your house. It's the same thing. I don't, and you know what I'm getting at? I get I mean, it, Randy, yeah. Of, I get yep. it. They're saying they're a, well, they're just a flesh and blood animal. Bullshit, they are not that. They are not that. How can they say that so adamantly about that mm. when they never seen one? Or the one guy that's really good with tracks, he's saying, and once I tell you what I'm going to say, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. And he's a good guy. I've talked to him on the phone before. He said, well, they got to have this much food to sustain this, to sustain the, this many calories to sustain life. Well, how does he know that? He's going by what gorillas have to have. They're not a gorilla. Maybe they don't have to have any calories. We, we don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Sure. He should say, if they are like an ape or a regular animal, that when they're that big, they would need this many calories to sustain life. But I don't know what they need. That would be more easy to take. Mm. But he's not saying it that way. There, I had to get that in there. <laughs> that, that's all right, Randy. You go right ahead. Um, yeah. yeah. I have a... So a few more questions. Have you ever heard anything like this maybe sounds like a whoop or any other sounds like that? Oh yeah. I've had growls at me. I've had whoops at me. I've had logs thrown at me in the, in the river. Yeah. I've had, I got recorded wow. that stuff. Oh, yep. you do. Okay. Are those available through oh, that do. publication as well? Probably. N no, they're no? just on my recorder. Nope. I never shared them with nobody. Oh my goodness, Randy. Wow. Okay. That's yep. that's incredible. Um, Doug Hitchek, um, recording engineer, took yeah. them, um, all my recordings and put them in a file for me, so I have them. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got. Okay, I got something else to tell you. All right. Two years ago, I finally said yes to this. Doug Hitchek's recording engineer guy, his name is Adam. They brought eight cameras out here, but they weren't trail cameras. Maybe you know about this. They weren't trail cameras. They were regular security cameras, and they did a thousand feet of extension cord and a thousand feet of Wi-Fi cable to the cameras, and they put them out in the woods out here, in the location. Did you know about that? And they were on 24 hours a day, and if you were linked up to it, you could watch them 24 hours a day. Uh, I mean, I hadn't heard of that specifically, but uh, yeah. I don't have a lot of time to be <laughs> watching stuff either because I'm doing the podcast. But um, yeah, go tell us all about it, though, please. Well, they did that. And they had them all set up there. And um, the one wasn't through the iCloud, but Doug seen three of them walk by the camera and said he was so happy about it and excited. He said he broke out down in tears. Oh, my. I got lots of orbs. You just see these orbs. They're not flies. and They are massive orbs. I got orbs. Um, Doug really is a don't know what to make of this. It's really some. I got orbs that are It's like a mass of orbs coming out of the ground coming back down into the ground, swirling around, going straight, going up and down, going, it's really something else. Yeah, I got them. Those were kind of recordings. I've saved them. I got another recording. It was about a three second, maybe even a two second video of a Sasquatch walking by the camera with an orb behind it. So I took a still, a screenshot of it, stopped the thing, took a screenshot of it. And I have that. It's, if you get on my little page here, I had George Workman and his wife come from Ohio because they heard about this place. And he said, Randy, you got so much going on here. You need to get a little page or something to keep your pictures in order, make it a private one. So that's the head, that's the head picture of my little private page. It's called Randy's Bigfoot Research. Okay. So anybody can get on it. I just have to, you know, invite them to it or, or accept them. And then what you're going to see on there is all the structures. You're going to see the new structures that I find. You're going to see um, how the little blocks are and the little gifting that I do and how they move it and how I move it and how it's changed and the Y sticks they gave me. Um, did I tell you, I got 40 deer. Yeah. I told you about the 40 deer skulls. Uh, you said there was a gifting situation that was going on where it'd be left in the, um, the deer stand, right? Yeah. Yeah. They'll, um, I'll come to my deer stand and there's a eight, there'll be an eight, like a six point buck or an eight point buck standing on my deer stand. Wow. And, um, or I'll be walking down a trail, come back, hour later on the same trail back in the woods and there's a there's a, a spike buck skull laying there 
And the thing about the, all these deer skulls is there's no chew marks on them, not, not a one. They're perfect. One time I came to one of my deer stands, and there's a beaver skull on my deer stand. <laughs> the little one, you know, with the buck teeth, the teeth coming out. Sure. Now, the other two guys that hunt back there, they only go back there a week before deer hunting and make sure their stand's good, and their stand is on the, on the line on the, no, the fence line. They don't even go in the woods. Now you got time for a really weird story. And I've had, I got witnesses with me on this one. Absolutely. Okay. I got me, John Badger, Mike Quas, the guy that wrote the book and, um, Terry son, Tanner, he, he's um, like 31 now. Anyways, I'll try to make it short cause it can be long. We're at the original teepee. There's the original teepee back there. It's a big one. And Mike says, man, look at that TP. I says, Mike, you know that TP. That's one that's in the book. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you. you yeah. <laughs> you know what? you got to remember this now. Right. At the original TP, they wanted me to take them to go north and then cross the Beaver Dam to get to the Cedar Swamp area. They've never been back in there. And that's where I was back in there. They said my name and all that. I mean, when I got to the house, but they followed me. But anyways, you got to remember this now. At the original TP, about 25 yards, you could see the fence line, the clearing in the fence line. And about 25 yards to the west, you could see a bunch of pine trees. Okay? Remember that. Don't forget about that. Okay. We're at the original TB. Okay. They want me to take them north. And I could walk those woods in the nighttime, even though I feel weird. I know them woods really good. But anyway, they want me to take them north. We got to walk to get to there. I suppose we have to walk a half mile through the woods to get to the river to cross the beaver dam. So I get about 70, 80 yards from that TP, they're following me, and I come across these two square holes. They're about a foot and a half wide, long, and a foot and a half wide, and, a, and about eight inches deep. Two of them right together. No trees fell over. It, it look out of place to me because they're perfectly square. So I'm down on my hands and knees looking at them. Well, this is weird, I say. Look at this. We're all looking at it. But I get all the leaves out of them and stuff, and, I'm, and there was a little snow on the ground. Um, um, whatever. I don't know what they are. So we get up and I'm, I'm not a normal 64 year old. As you can tell, I got lots of energy. Most 20 year olds can't even keep up with me in the woods. So I'm trying to slow my pace down, but I'm getting, we walk quite a ways. And all of a sudden I say, Oh my God, you guys. Now don't forget the fence line and the pine trees. Oh my God. I'm excited. You got to see this teepee here. I never knew this was here. This is really something. They finally get up with me, and they're excited about it. In fact, Mike's inside of the book writers inside the TV, and we're taking pictures of him. We're videotaping it and all that stuff. And it's getting to be like quarter to five. You know, it's going to get close to dark. We get done with all that excitement. I say, you sure you guys want to keep going? We got a ways to walk to get to the river. And I said, once we get over there, we got to walk back. So we'll be walking in the dark. And I said, no, no, let's 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 not do that. So then we got to walk south. And we got to walk to those pine trees. And it takes us a little bit to get to those pine trees. When we get to them, we get out to the fence line. We go west. And we got about a mile walk. And we get home. Those guys all leave. I'm looking at my my video and my pictures of that new teepee that I'm excited about. Guess what? We weren't at no new teepee. We were at the original teepee. Really? Yeah, now what happened there? I can't even put a finger on it. I went back the next day, and my tracks and their tracks in the snow go north. They didn't go a little way, and then circle around and be back at the original teepee. And our eyeballs never seen the pine trees or the fence line. But then when we left what we thought was at a new teepee, we had to walk quite a ways to get to the pine trees. But the original teepee is only 25, not even 25 yards from the pine trees of the original teepee. I cannot put my finger on it. I wish somebody could explain to me what happened because I don't, it was, it's weird. But now after that happened to me and I got to thinking about it, there have been times when I've been back there, all of a sudden I get this sense of that. I don't know where I'm at and I got to use the compass when I'm know where I'm at back there. And that feel, everything feels strange to me in that area. And there's a native guy. He's part of the SRA, Chris Sam. His name is that one area there. He does not like being there. It really freaks him out. He says, and that's the same area where we were at, but what did they do to us? You got any answer for me on that one? How did they put a new teepee there? But we were at the original teepee, but we really weren't because our tracks went North and there was snow on the ground. 
Did they just put that in our minds? But the camera, when I'm looking at my video, I can see that we're at the original TV and I can see the fence line. That's where I knew we were at the original TV. I see the fence line. Mm. Yeah. I know it. Randy, I... That's why Doug calls mm. it the Skinwalker Ranch of the North here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would be very cautious (laughs) walking around that property by myself for sure. Like, man, dude. Yes. You get a dreaded feeling. I was out there today. I walked out there today by myself. John Badger was with me yesterday, and we found a good track line. Of course, you know, we don't have no cats and stuff or anything. It was kind of raining yesterday and all that, and I'm, I'm out of that stuff. And So we're walking back there, and we found one 16 inches long, 5 inches wide at the heel, and about 7 steps, about 6 feet apart in the woods. It was in some mossy area right there, so it stepped. We couldn't even put an indent, indentation or whatever it is, dent in that where it stepped, and it was down there about a good 4 or 5 inches. So it was a heavy one. And there was a really good structure right by it. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but there was. So, Randy, you got any more questions? Yeah, I, I do have, well, I, let's see, uh, two. Um, okay. Okay, so the first one is, can you tell me, you, you mentioned really quick at the beginning that you've heard something that sounds like the Sierra sounds on your property. Okay, yes, I have. Okay, now... We got this trailer house in our yard, and a lot of my band guys, they're not from here. They might be from Florida or what, real road guys, you know, because we're an actual road band. And um, one of them was Chris, guitar player, and he, got the, he could stay in the trailer house because when we have a week off or so, they can't go back to wherever they're from, Florida or whatever, and then come back again. So they stay in that trailer house. About 3 or 4 in the morning, he was out smoking his cigarettes and stuff on the picnic table. And he come in the house, and he was – in the morning, about eight, you know, come in the house. It was, it was white, a sheet, like a sheet white. He was scared. He said, Randy, something went through your yard. It was huge, had red eyes. And it said, it, he sounded like the Tasmanian devil. He said, that's what it sounded like. He said, I'll never set out there again. And it making some kind of garbled weird sound. Like it was talking. So I think he's just joking with me and making that up. About a month later, everybody's gone. My yard light's not working. But we get woke up about four in the morning, our windows open, to two of them walking through the yard, making this like, I can kind of do it. It sounds dumb, but I can kind of do it like, we're going on, doing like that. There was two of them. They were like talking to each other, going through our whole yard. And I was telling Jim Hebb from the SRA about it. He said, Randy, I had never heard about the Sierra sound. Go to the Sierra sound. Is that what you heard? I looked exactly to a T. Exactly. What, what, wow. what we heard it, it, it's like, it matches it totally perfect <sighs> that's that's <laughs> intense uh yeah it is i know <laughs> no last year samantha was on the sra was up here and they were up past kellier they were going to do a little researching up there and um samantha was here at the house cleaning my wife terry was up at oak island that's on lake of the woods 40 miles across the lake she was working there for the summer that's why a lot of times i was home by myself and um she was there cleaning the house and i was up gonna go up to meet those guys what they were doing there all of a sudden i get a phone call and um samantha says randy you got to get back here i got all this disoriented outside and everything was really weird and i felt like i was being watched and I said, well, I can't come right the second. Here's what you do. And she heard two knocks at the end of the day. I said, go out and stand on the deck and talk to them. Tell them who you are. Tell them you mean no harm and you're I'm friendly and all that stuff. And she did that, and she got two more knocks at her. So <laughs> there's another one for you. And this is all going on current day right now. This stuff is time. going on yeah, all yeah. the time. This, this, Yes, all the time. This is not like, um, My goodness. And nothing against anybody. That's good that they've had this. It's not like, oh, I had a glimpse of something 20 years ago, and I'm pretty sure it was one. No, this is, my sightings are a double A class. They, and every time I've seen them, I'm not trying to see them. That's when I get my really good sightings. I'm not trying to see them. Now, I've had some uh, medicine man come here from um, Panema, Minnesota, on the Red Lake Reservation, and two of his friends. And, um, he doesn't really want to come back here no more. It's too weird for him. I had another one of his um, the Indian guys come here, and we were back at the fire ring, me and Tanner, waiting for him. His name is um, Kip Perkins. 
And he got to my yard and he started walking back. It was dark out. And he turned around. I don't know what really happened to him. He turned around, went back in his car, went back in the black duck and called me. Said, Randy, I got you got to come get me. Come meet me at your house or I can't walk back there by myself. Something scared the heck out of him. And so that happens. Okay. Two years ago, the SRA was here. Um, two guys camped in one part of the 40 acres, one corner. Another two guys, that's Andy from the BFRO. He used to be, I don't know his last name, and his son. In the other corner of the, of the 40 acres. And then Todd and another guy camped in the middle on one of my trails. And then Mike, the book writer, stayed in that trailer house. Well, the week before that, Every day when I was out there doing my gifting, I'd say, okay, you guys, I got some friends coming here. They're harmless. They're, they're good guys, but I want you to scare the hell out of them. Mess them up. I said that every day. <laughs> and guess what happened? Andy and his son, Friday night, something walking back by their, by their tent, hitting their tent, and they said it was smelling really bad. They were too scared to get out and look. Um, the next corner... Saturday morning, about five thirty-six in the morning, they heard him. Well, when they got up, the one guy said to the other guy, did you have your breakfast? And the other guy said, no, I thought you did. Well, something went in their cooler, unlatched their cooler, took the lid off, put the lid on the table, and went through all their stuff. Okay. Now, I took those guys back in the state land. They're walking with me. Well, this Andy guy and his son is about 100 feet from us. And I didn't realize they had a sense of something was watching them. And there's these ravens. I have to tell you about ravens, too. Ravens have something to do with Sasquatch. But anyways, we had these ravens circling us. And they kept following us and circling us. And I told the other guys, I said, listen here, I can sound like a raven. So I kind of did my raven call. And when I did that, there was a Sasquatch about 15 feet from that Andy and his son got up and walked off. They seen it with their own eyes walk off. It was that black one. So... We get back. Guess what? Something went in, the, in my house when the door was locked and took a, a stick of butter. I took the wrapper off the stick of butter and stuck it on my refrigerator door. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> huh. I don't do that. I don't do that. There's nobody home. My door is locked. And Saturday night, okay, Saturday evening, Another Sasquatch was seen crossing in front of that Andy and his son. And then about four in the morning, Sunday morning, Todd, the guy was camped in the middle with another guy in another tent. Something went by their tent, slap on the side of their tent, but they also heard wings flapping. They said they got so scared that this Todd guy, he's kind of the head of the SRA now, kind of put his head under, this, under his sleeping bag. And then it came back a couple minutes later, wings flapping again, hitting their tent. They did not get out and look. And so Sunday morning, me and Mike were standing in our yard by my house here. I said, hey, let's walk down the, the fence line there and and go into the woods there where that Andy seen it going to the woods there. And I didn't figure we'd see anything. And we didn't. So we come back to my pickup. Guess what happens? A raven flies out of the woods where we just came from, gets lower than the tea treetops gets it about 10 feet from our head and hovers there and staring at me and Mike and looking at us directly in the eye. Then it turns around and flies back in the woods. Now that is not normal. Yeah, that's not normal. Wow. That is weird. There's a lot of times I'm back in the woods by myself and I'll have two or three ravens circling me and flying me. Now I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just going to tell you something that was told to me, you know, Robin McRae. Yes. Robin but Haynes. Yes. Yes. Okay, of her, well, she was on that Bobby Dizzle show the other day, and she's talking, and I don't know her, but she's got, she's talking about, she's got a lot of the same stuff happening to her that I have here, a lot of the same stuff. So I wanted to talk to her, get her insight on what's going on here. And we talked about ravens. She said that Sasquatch can see through ravens' eyes. That's why they follow you. And I don't know about that, but it would make sense, because that's what's happening here. And I told her, I want to get to the next level with them. I mean, they're listening to me. They're doing a few little things I ask them for, ask them to do and all that stuff, but I have not got a name. And I try every day, but I'm not getting that. And I can't do that mind speak thing. I don't know nothing about that. Now, do you know about the sheet squatchers? I've never met them, but I know of them. Yeah. You know of them. Yeah. Yep. And you believe in a remote viewing? <sighs> 
Andy. You know? Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know about uh, yeah, so, you, but they did some remote viewing here. Sure, yeah, I I know uh, I know of it. I've never looked into it, and so I don't have a yay or nay about it. But we can continue yeah, with the conversation. Yeah, either, yeah, right. Yeah, either do I. Um, they they seen twenty of them here. They said, and then um, when they were remote viewing, I was back in the woods. They didn't even know I was back in the woods, and they they told me they seen me. They said exactly where I was at. Now, could it be an educated guess? I guess it could be, but they don't know these woods here. Right. So okay, sure. I, I don't sure. know about that. Yeah. But they <sighs> spent weird. five days here. Oh, really? They spent five days wow. here with Jason Kenzie. You know him? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's the, is he the gentleman who does the, all the documentaries? Searching yeah, for Sasquatch? Yeah, he kind of yeah. makes a joke yep. about it, but he's still a good guy. Oh, yeah. He makes yeah. fun, laughs. And, yeah. yeah, Jason, he was here for five days, too. Okay, cool, cool. They, the same thing with him, and they have, he's never seen so many structures and so much stuff. And they got some um, some howls at them. He did one of his – I don't usually let people do all that knocking and all that, but he did one of his howls one night about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, and he got an answer back. Really awful sounding thing. Man. Um, the last question that I have in my mind right now is um, have you ever looked – to see and done any research about is there anything about your specific area or region that could explain all this weird stuff happening the bigfoot dog man little people all that stuff you know i haven't but i think i need to go to the courthouse and find out what used to be here go back as far as i can go right? i think you That's should what i need to do i think i think that would be I smart do it. I, yeah. I know it's easy to do just go there and do it well that might explain what's what's going on really you know yeah. It, it might be. No, there's a, not a lot of times, but there's times back in a state line, I'll come across a mound and I can see that there's a hole on the other side of it. And it's maybe seven, six, seven feet long and there's no trees there. So I've always wondered about that. And I'm not going to sit there and dig it up, but it doesn't seem right. I've always said, what is this mound here? It seems weird. It's on your land? Yeah. yeah or it's back <laughs> in a state land. Can you define what you mean by state land? Just oh, well, Minnesota, you, like our land is private land. This forty acres is private. Sure, but then Minnesota owns land too, and they call it state land. That's what I mean by that. They it's just Minnesota have, owned land. They just have random state land. Yes, yeah, they okay. have random sections of land. Yes, so, like um, by the Black Creek River, there's about eight thousand acres of state land that the Minnesota owns. It's, you can't build on it or do anything. You can drive around on it and all that stuff. And sure, it. yeah. And and you don't got to get permission. You can just go on it. It sounds like you came across potentially some kind of Indian burial mound or something. Yeah, I and um, I don't know either because yeah. um, the, uh, well, a couple of years ago in a little creek, it's called Spring Creek. I'm digging around there. I'm just because I want to try to find some arrowheads, and I never found one. I found a shark tooth. Now that isn't that weird. That is that is pretty weird. Yeah. Doug told me it's a shark tooth. I'm just getting this from him. I never. He said that's a shark tooth. Interesting. The other day I found some petrified wood in that in that river. Hunk of petrified wood. I don't know. Can petrified wood petrify itself in a hundred years, or is it really old? I don't know that part. Hmm. Man, this yeah, you're is right. Weird. I need to look up. What's what's what, how far I can go back in the county records? See what used to be here. I think you'll be very surprised if you do a little bit of digging to see. Oh man, who knows what could have happened on on your property and even your neighbor's property back in the day? You know that could really explain. Yeah, you're right. I'd say go for it, man. Well, I am gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna <sighs> go for it. Yeah, I just go to go to Bemidji. And they, I mean, it's. I think they'll even help you look stuff up, give you the books, and you look it up. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Randy, what an, what an incredible story. And it sounds like y'all have the resource area where we'll put uh, the book from Mike in there so people can read more about, uh, you know, things that have happened in your area and kind of flesh out mm -hmm. the story a little bit, I believe too. But um, wow, Mike, uh, sorry, Randy, thank you for sharing all, all this story with me. This is incredible. Yeah, well, here's one thing I'm going to tell you. There's right. been times where we've been sitting at the fire ring, me and the, and the 
two or three of the people there that that want to come here, and we'll have a real scream at us. It was really terrible sounding. And this is a new rule I'm giving people I let come here. What they'll do right away is get up with their flashlights looking around. Then it's it's gone. So my new rule is if people are going to be with me and that happens, don't move. Just sit there and keep talking like we don't hear it, and maybe we'll get even more action. Exactly. That's but a it's great. A coyote and a wolf and a cougar. When we're sitting on that fire ring out in the open, they're not going to come up there and then scream at us. <sighs> no, wow. that it's not. That's not going to happen. And we've had logs throw at us in the creek, and it's not a beaver tail slap. I know what that is. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I get to keep telling you more. Do, do you tell me if you want <sighs> me to stop? Randy. <laughs> so. How about this? I'll do, I'll do, uh, we'll do one more question. Um, has there ever been a time when you're out in the woods where it has been so intense where you're like, I wish I could get out of here right now? Yes, it has been some of those times when, and it didn't dawn on me at the time before I ever had that, where we thought we were at a new TV. Yeah. There's been times in my stomach is in a knot and everything. I'm sitting back there. And I don't even recognize where I'm at. That's mm. the times that that has happened. Sure. And I have to, lucky I have my, I have a compass. Oh, I got one more thing I got to tell you. Okay. I have a compass on me. I got two more things I got to tell you, then I'll stop. All right. These are good ones. <laughs> and I got picture too. Okay. Um, I had all this weird stuff going on here. The SRA was getting a little bit worried for us here. So they got me a gift of about five or six of those um, security cameras. So I pull, and they'll go right to my email, you know, to Wi-Fi and all that. And so I had one in the bedroom, looking out the bedroom window facing east. One morning, all of a sudden, my phone goes off from that camera. And I look at it. Oh, my God, Terry, you got to see this here. There's a dog. But you can see through it. The dog is forming or it's unformed. I can see through the body. I can see the outline of the legs and the tail and the face. It looks like a husky or a German shepherd, but I can see through it. And I said, oh, my God, Terry, you got to see this. You can see through this dog. It's forming here. But it, it set the camera off, though. And then all of a sudden, it goes off again when I'm ready to hand the camera or the phone to Terry to look at it. I said, oh, it went off again. I look at it. There's a Sasquatch in my um, phone from that camera. It is massive, huge. I said, oh, my God, Terry, we got a Sasquatch right on here from that camera. I go ready to hand her the phone to see that, and my phone goes dead just like that. Oh, my phone went dead. I plug it in. It comes on 75% charge and no Sasquatch. It's not in my, it's not, not in, it's not even on the SD card of the camera. Totally gone. But the dog thing is just still there. I, I'll send you that picture. Wow. When we get off the phone, I'll send you. Okay. And another time I'm back in the woods, back in that state land where farther back in where I don't use to take people. And I come across a pile of crap. It's about, Two feet long, it looked like it come out of an elephant. It is huge. But there's straw laying all down in the woods. How does straw get back in the woods? It doesn't get back in the woods. And the only person that bails straw around here is about a mile and a half north of our house. And there's no way straw is going to come from there all the way back to the woods, about three miles back into the woods. Anyways, and there was a bunch of red willows busted over. And I, I said, oh, my God, i got to take a picture of this here. I take a picture of it. My phone goes dead again, just like that. I get home, because my phone is dead. I get home, get it charged up. There's no picture on there. I go back, because I'm going to take a picture of that crap again, because it's big. It's all gone. It's not there. But guess what I found? When you bail hay, or what they do now, you know, you know what round bales are. I'm sure you do from Iowa. Mm-hmm. The big round bales of hay or straw. Oh, sure. Yeah, and then they wrap it. It's wrapped with that um, white nylon webbing. Mm-hmm. Well, how did this happen? I found that white nylon webbing wrapped around a tree back in the woods. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. How did that happen? How, how about this one here? I'm. I got a, our John Deere lawnmower. It's a big one, but all wheels, wheel back wheels turn, but it's not zero turn. It's still got a steering wheel. It's a four twenty five. Yeah. I mow on the lawn. Our lawn is big. I park it up by the house facing east it's not on no hill or nothing um you can't push it because it's got the hydrostatic transmission i go in here and eat something come back out there it's 75 yards away facing north and south how'd that happen 
Um, I go in the new garage here, and there's seven finger streaks all the way across the garage. Here's another one. Me and Tanner cut a little trail to, to the creek, just a little one. Maybe it's like 20 yards through there because a bunch of brush was down. I had Tanner pile all the brush and some little trees and stuff in one nice pile back in the woods. I come back the next day. All that brush was taken out and piled across my four-wheel trail about four feet up. I couldn't get through there. All I did was laugh. I laughed at it. So you guys got me on this one. There's no human coming back. They're going to do that. Nobody knew I did all that cutting. <laughs> so I have stuff like that happen in here all the time. My goodness. Uh, your story definitely <laughs> isn't done. It's just getting bigger and bigger every day. I, think. I know. Yeah. Look, now you know why at the beginning of this, when this has all happened, I got to reach out to somebody. I got to talk to somebody that knows what's going oh, on yeah. here. Oh, yeah. That's why I started, and that's why that book was written, because now he wants to write a second book, because there's so much, it's ongoing all the time. It didn't, it ain't just like one thing, and then it's not mo no more. It's always going on. And <laughs> another unique thing about your story is that you've mentioned so many different people that have come to your property and experienced weird things. So you could do yep. like... I could do like five more episodes asking, like talking to these other people and be like, is this true? And there's so many more people yeah, that I could like, it's, it's wild. Like it's, it's very unique. It's, it's awesome. Um, but, Reach wow. out to John Badger. He'll talk to you. Okay. Yeah. He was just here yesterday when he found that track line. Yeah. He'll talk to you. Yeah. Randy, incredible Mike, story. Hey, reach out to Mike Quas for the book writer. He'll talk to you. I, I'm going to definitely check out this book next. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Uh, Randy, keep me in the loop. I, I think I'm already, uh, in, in that group that you mentioned, uh, your uh, research group, but, um, yeah, keep me, I thought keep you me informed. Were. I yeah. thought you were. That's yeah. I thought that you, cause I recognize your name when I seen that little pose. I said, well, I've had lots of encounters. I wrote in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. It makes sense. But, oh man, it, thank you so much for, for coming on tonight. And, uh, I have a feeling we might be, we might be checking in, uh, maybe a little bit later to get an update, but sure. wow, this is some uh, wild stuff, Randy. And hopefully our, our paths cross someday. Yeah. Maybe you need to see, come to Northern Minnesota one, one weekend. Hey, not that far away from Iowa. So we'll see. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks a lot. You have a good night, sir. Yep. Bye. Hi there. Did you make it through another episode of Bigfoot Society and you want to hear more? Check out this episode of Bigfoot Society, all about the dark secrets of the Enchanted Circle in New Mexico. You're going to love it if you just loved this last episode. So check it out. See you later.